Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Rob here today. We're going to talk about instant cameras. I thought it'd be kind of fun to get these guys out and share with you my thoughts after taking thousands of photos with each of these, well, not each of them, but between them, um, thousands of images, probably, probably 2000 images on the Instax uh, Mini 90, maybe 500 over here on the Fujifilm Square 6, close to 200 over here. Same, about 200 images, probably 300 over here, maybe 400, over 3,000, right? And then uh, do prints however you like on the little share printer. All of these cameras are great cameras. I think, I think we got to talk about what instant photography is, why it's important today, and what you can expect from these different cameras. There's a lot of guides out there that tell you what to look for, and I think they're all really important, so I hope to add to that body of thoughts. Uh, a couple of things I'd like to get to the point right up front. If you're going to be photographing and you want the best image quality, go ahead and just pick up an Instax. If you just want a one and done and you don't want much to have to do, uh, go ahead and grab your Instax and you'll be good to go. It's going to be uh, beautiful colors, nice and sharp. It's going to develop quickly. You don't really have to worry too much about hiding it from the sun, things like that. So any of the Instax cameras are going to function uh, impeccably quick and reliable, reliably. When you get over into Polaroid, you start kind of, eh, kind of going and walking down a different path. There's a lot of reasons for that, but the reality is that poor old Polaroid is still kind of struggling in the image quality department to keep things straightened out. For example, take this image right here. Uh, looks nice and everything, but you might be able to see a magenta hue. That's because the film has to be kept at the right temperature when you're photographing. Also, the expiration date on the film when you're using it is really important to watch because expired film will produce a different kind of image. Now, the white balance may not show this directly, but here's another one where you're getting kind of a, a weird color cast, you know? Image isn't exactly focused either, and that's okay. Here's another one weird color cast. I'm just trying to show you some about Polaroid. Let's get that right there. Anyways, we'll talk about some of that in a minute. Uh, Polaroid definitely is my more favorite system to shoot with. Uh, I like the vintage feel of something like this SX-70 with a mint flash bar. I like the fact that I can focus, nice manual focusing just like these two cameras right here. Uh, but it's just cool when you're, when you're using Polaroid. It just feels nostalgic. Fujifilm, uh, although better in my opinion as far as image quality and stuff, is so digital. It's not digital, but it feels digital. The process feels more modern, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So a lot of that's going to have to, to depend on what you're looking for. I absolutely love the results like this of me kissing my sweetheart in this uh, picture right here. My son took that in stack square six. Really great shot. So let's break down each one of these cameras real quick. We kind of talked a little bit about the feel. So we've got the Mini 90. This is an excellent point and shoot but it's an advanced point and shoot. And Fuji kind of makes their camera line, they, they come out with new cameras, like they came out with the Mini 40 recently. It's kind of a retro looking camera. This is still in the camera line. The Mini 40 is about the same price as this. This particular camera, the Neo Classic is what they call it, right? This particular camera right here has the most user selectable options from exposure compensation, plus or minus one or two stops. Uh, depending on the direction you're going macro, uh, the light and dark button with exposure compensation, a flash override, self timer, all those kinds of things. You even have additional uh, functionality through a little ring right there, which allows you to uh, change the settings on the fly as well. And it, when you turn it off, it just collapses real nicely. Fuji is really good about that. Now it's got that Fuji 62 mm or 60 millimeter Fujinon lens. It's an F12.8 lens all the way down to 22, I believe. And 12.8 is a pretty small aperture. It's really great for helping make sure that you get things in nice sharp focus, but it's very dark. So when you're using it indoors, especially at nighttime, forget about it. I, I just wouldn't even do it unless you have a system to trigger a wireless flash. And you can do that because it has a flash on here. And so you can set a flash in slave mode and do some exposure tests. Uh, Fujifilm, Instax film is ISO 800. So recognizing ISO 800, F12 and it's probably going to choose, you know, with flash on uh, 1 60th of a second, then you can work out an exposure compensation or an exposure value that you could use an off camera flash. In fact, that can be said with any of these. Knowing is half the battle, right? 
Moving on over to the square, the difference is the format. So when you talk about pictures, Instax Mini is small like this, right? Tiny, okay? Uh, here's another one. Here's a kind of a fun one too, right? Compared to Instax Square, which, uh, yeah, right there. Well, how about this one? You haven't seen that one. So that would be the comparison, okay? Uh, we'll pull out a Polaroid shot, much bigger. You can see that right there. And we've got Instax Wide represented over here somewhere as well. So you've got Instax Wide in there. Instax Wide is basically two Instax Minis wide. But shooting Instax Square, I, it's probably my favorite out of all of them to shoot just because I love the square format. Who doesn't, right? Instagram, right? <laughs> Polaroid did it first. Uh, Fuji was actually sued by Polaroid because of the square format, and Fuji won. Uh, they didn't have to pay any kind of money that I'm aware of. But again, with this camera, we turn it on, it zooms out, very much like the Neo Classic, the Mini 90. Lots of functions on the back. You still get that big, beautiful Fujinon lens, right? Except now the back LCD display has been replaced with just a, uh, a digital, well, an analog dis analog. Uh, icons with digital lights that'll tell you what it's doing. Of course, we're shooting 10 shots and all of them with the Instax, eight shots only with Polaroid. Now, when you move over to the Polaroid side of the house, I, I really like, man, I gotta tell you, I really like the One Step Plus. This is a cool camera, okay? It's got some features on it that are integrated with your phone. Right? So it's got Bluetooth connectivity, and you can shoot manual, you can do light painting, you just pull up the app. I like that. So it allows you to shoot with this analog film, but also have manual granular control over the aperture and the shutter speed. Now, I don't recall 100%, but I believe it'll go up to 1 500th of a second. Uh, but I know that it'll go from F64 all the way down to F12, or F8 maybe? Maybe even lower? Oh, goodness, I was just using it earlier and I can't recall. Uh, but it also has two different focusing modes. There's zone focusing modes, a close mode, which is basically handheld, and then further out. And you find that information down here on the bottom as well. So I like the way that they hooked that up. It's got a built-in tripod socket, which is nice, a nice built-in flash. And this particular model even has an exposure compensation right there. Self-timer is set by pushing the uh, plus button on the One Step Plus twice. And then you can override the flash if you choose to by holding down the flash override button when you turn the camera on. It also charges via USB, which is nice, not USB-C though. And the packs, the film packs that it uses, well, that's an Instax, here we go, have no battery contacts. Let's see if we've got one that does. We do. So this is the type of battery pack you need to use for the SX-70. It has a battery contact on the back. There's a battery built in. On the iType film packs, no batteries. Now, that's because the battery is built in. Now, you can use the 600 type film in the iType cameras. It's just more expensive because you're paying for the battery. <laughs> so why not just use the right one in the first place? Cool camera. Really enjoy using it. Now, I got to tell you, this one right here, this bad boy, the land camera, this is the SX-70. This thing is gorgeous. Okay, I love everything about it. Refurbished, wonderful, no flash bar. Of course, it's got a trick too, right? You already knew that though, didn't you? Right, okay, folds flat. And this is just simply flash, right? Uh, it doesn't do any particularly advanced modes like um, rear curtain or anything like that. Uh, it just flash. And it's kind of hit or miss. I do like the fact that we can actually focus here. We've got a focusing ring and we also have exposure compensation by this little lighter dark meter, as you can see right there. You should be able to see that. Uh, you focus by looking through, and there's actually a focusing rangefinder split image prism right there. It's not a rangefinder, but it is a split image prism. And it loads from the front, really cool. Now there's film in here, but it just loads like that. I hope I don't, yeah, it didn't. <laughs> I just thought for a second that maybe it was going to Go ahead and spit one out. Now I took some pictures earlier with Instax Wide. I'll show you in a second the RF70 by Mint. And I 
I wanted to compare them, yeah, here's another one, to a picture taken with the SX-70. There you go. Those were taken tonight, right? And we'll give a look at them in a second. I got the other one right here. In fact, I haven't even seen it yet. It's been developing for about 20 minutes or so. And usually the Polaroid film is just no good inside. Even with the mint flash bar that I use, I use it on half power. It's got a xenon flash, really, really bright. I also am using the Polaroid 600 film, which is an ISO 640 rated. The SX-70 is based on a 400 speed film, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. In any way, I use the ND filters so that you can use the 600 type film in the SX670. And this is what we got. Oh, goodness. I'll put these up right here so you can see them. Check this out. Okay, so the Polaroids in the center and the Instax are on the opposite sides. All three used flash. Full, well, full power flash here, medium power flash there, and medium power flash here. Of course, the flashes are all different. Interesting result. Another reason I don't generally like to use uh, instant film inside, but I do like the fact that Instax is at least a little bit more consistent. And I was using this cool flash bar made by Mint Camera. Right, this flash bar right here allows you to have flash on your SX-70. Now Mint makes, uh, well Mint refurbishes a lot of these cameras and also creates specific gizmos like the time machine that you plug on right here which allow you to control the shutter speed and the aperture directly. Really neat stuff. Moving on along we've got some Mint creations. This is the special RF-70. Now man I gotta tell you I really like this camera. Shoots Instax wide, it takes neutral density filters. It uh, collapses when you push the button just right. Folds down flat. It's got one to one five hundredth of a second shutter speed, F5.6 all the way down to 22 on the aperture. I think it's a, I forget the lens focal length. Let's see if it says on there. I don't recall the lens focal length right off the bat, but that's okay. Um, bellows operation, opens, locks out. Now this is one of the prototypes that they had that they sent. Lots of different reviewers got a chance to review it as did I. I got a chance to keep it, so thanks Mint. I really appreciate that. The cool part here is it's got a built-in integrated flash. It's also got a flash PC sync port, which is really nice right there. And it's completely manual or um, uh, aperture priority. That's really cool. I like this camera. And it's taken some great, great images. But when I got started for Mint, it was actually on the TL70. This is Twins Lens Reflex. Now, Ricoflex actually has, or Roliflex actually has one of these out too. It's made in collaboration with Mint. It's their design. Roli helped out, uh, or Rico helped out to, uh, after it was already created, to update it a little bit. This is the Gen 2 with the bright viewfinder, which is really nice. You can look down there and see all the cool things that it's seeing. You can actually focus this camera. That's what I really liked about it in the first place. It's got a focusing wheel over here, right? You've also got an exposure compensation for plus or minus one exposure value. You also have a nice little um, bulb mode right there if you'd like. You can turn it to bulb mode. And then on the other side, you've actually got a flash pop-up right there. So the flash is pretty cool too. Of course, it takes neutral density filters, so it's easy to F8 plus ND8 is great in the sun at the beach. I like that quite a bit. And it's so neat, the actual image pops out of the top right here. But they didn't finish that. They've also got a little sport finder, right? You saw how we did that, right? Check that out. And then they even have a pop-up loop for manual focusing. Do you see that right there? Right? It's pretty neat stuff. Runs off of three AA batteries. It's really cool. This one is two AA batteries. Then we got the Instax Share Printer, and the whole line of Share Printers are great. They make it easy to share photos straight from your Fujifilm camera, like your X-T2 or X-T3 or X-100 series. I think X-100T uh, and on had that capability built into it. It's really neat. 
Also makes it easy to share straight from your phone, any photo that's on your phone with the Instax app. So you can print these out in the mini format or the square format. So very cool. So very cool. So we kind of talked a little bit about the cameras. Each one has a different feature that I like about it the most. Out of my Instax cameras made by Fujifilm, I like the square. I like the format, the size, the whole thing. I really enjoy it. The film is sharp across the board. Looks good, feels good, is good. And uh, it's just neat, you know? I would prefer it to be bigger, a size like this, you know, comparing them, but that's okay. We got Polaroid for that. When we're shooting Polaroid, it's just a bit more of a mixed bag. Because sometimes you get images like this. Notice the color cast. All right. And then sometimes you get images like this. That's shot on the SX-70 right there. That's my Olympus om 4 t with some accent lighting. And it's got the Fuji um, XF-20 flash on it. Absolutely gorgeous image right there. I love it. So it's hit or miss. Which one do I like for everyday shooting? I think I'm again gonna have to go with the Fujifilm, right? I like the square. I like the TL70. I like the RF70. Man, those big prints like this. This picture came out of that RF70 tonight and it's been sitting in there for long enough for the batteries in the RF70 to go dead, probably over a year since last July. And it just worked. Put new batteries in it, click, click, and it worked. Um, when I think about what photography is, and I think about these different things that I want to use, I don't know, man. I just kind of, I'm drawn to the SX-70, but it's, it's a tough beast. Not to use. The flash can be difficult because sometimes it fires and sometimes it doesn't fire. And you don't know when that'll be. So it, you don't always get a flash. Here, you can always get your flash you don't have control over focus. Here you've got control over focus and your exposure to some degree. I guess you got more control over exposure with your one step plus. But in the end, you know, it's just less consistent. Now, if you're just shooting without the flash, monochrome film, ah oh man, all day long. I think right out of here, there's something about that lens. It's gorgeous, it's nice and sharp. Uh, it's the it's that lens that took this image. You know what I mean? Um, it's just it's just beautiful. Here's another cool one from the Fuji Fuji Film Instax Wide with the RF70. But you get that kind of reliability all the time with something like the RF70. Okay. I think you get the most reliable shots for your manual photography. If you wanted to be professional, I'd get the RF70. Instax Wide is excellent. I really like Instax Wide, okay? The RF70 lets you shoot completely manual if you'd like. And you can really dial in your exposure and you can use external flash. The TL70, the one I've got the most, most operating time with, I got this nailed, I can go out and shoot with it, but it still is a learning curve if you haven't shot for a while because it's also aperture priority. And some of the metering with the metering inside doesn't really uh, always work out well in every single situation, or at least mine didn't. So over 3,000 shots, I learned that basically F8 and ND8 outdoors in the bright sunlight when, you're, when you've got hard shadows using the Sunny 16 rule, which you can't really use the Sunny 16 rule, but you can kind of guess it. F8 plus ND8, like on the beach, where you've got sunlight reflecting off the ground back up, works great. In the shade, put on the uh, uh, minus exposure compensation, or, or in the bright sun, put on the minus exposure compensation, and on the, in the shade, put in the plus exposure compensation, and, and it'll work out good for you. It'll work out good in most situations. Moving on along for the Fujifilm, specific, branded, yeah, I gotta tell you that I just don't think you can go wrong with square. Now, if you're gonna talk about the most economical to photograph with, it's the Instax Mini. You can find 60 or 100 shots between $38 and $50 online uh, and get Best Buy to match it, which is pretty nice. The most expensive film that you're going to get is going to be the black framed color um, It's not this one. It'll be ones like this. The black framed color 
film. These were taken out at nighttime on Halloween that just passed. So cool. Very cool. These were taken with the SX-70, right? Um, uh, lots of fun. So there you have it. Just a little chit-chat about these cameras. You know, I couldn't just pick one because I like them each for different reasons. And I use them all for different purposes. And I've used each one of these at weddings before, created different albums for my brides. And we've just had a good time with them. And for that reason, I kind of love these cameras. I really like them a lot. They're really cool. And they're not necessarily expensive. The, the Polaroids and stuff are less than $100. This, you can get refurbished for a couple hundred bucks. $350 maybe from Mint. 800 bucks, depending on when you get it. If you're going to work professionally, and Instax is going to be a medium that you're going to try to sell professional work with, for a particular art, artistic creative endeavor, specifically when my brides want an Instax album, I'm pulling out the RF70. This is the camera I pull out. Uh, and it's because of the manual features. I just, if I got a bride that wants serious Instax album, this is it. If I got a bride that just wants a fun Instax album, this is it. If I got a bride that just wants some Polaroid and is really lo-fi, maybe the SX-70, but probably uh, the One Step Plus. I don't generally use this for paid work, right? But I would, I did, up until I got these other cameras. And then if you wanna kinda of cheat it, you, you can just get yourself an Instax printer and use some of the photos that you've taken with your proper uh, mirrorless camera. And I guess I'll tell you, I'll leave this with some fun. I went out shooting the other day uh, with my son, both of them, and we had a big adventure. There was a whole thing, Hampton University and everything else, and we went up on the Ferris wheel in Virginia Beach, which was cool, right? And we got some big pictures of the beach, right? And everything like that. And then we went down, that's the pier, uh, 15th Street. Then we went down, see this is something else you have to deal with with Polaroid. Cool image, but it didn't develop properly. And that can happen with Fujifilm, but it doesn't happen near as often as it does with Polaroid. You know, that was just old film. And you gotta be careful with that, you know. But then check out these shots, man. That's my boy, just sitting there. There's some magenta on the sides, verticals, but that's okay. That's, that's a great shot, I love it. And then, ha, this is fun. Let me just tell you, see, this is why I love Polaroid. I gotta tell you, you shoot Fuji, everything's just, Fuji film. I'm not talking about the specific brand of camera. I'm talking you shoot Instax and you're pretty much guaranteed that it's going to be an excellent exposure. You might have a dud here or there, but they got it dialed in. But sometimes you pick up your Polaroid camera and you stick it out the window and you just take a picture of this muscle car, an old Chevy SS396. Dude, that was awesome. My son's hanging out. We got the top down. He's jumping up with his camera to take a picture. And the guy's like chilling, he's blasting his music, we're having a good time. And then I just hold this out the window, I can't even see through it because I'm behind the driver's seat and I just push the button. <laughs> and the luck of the draw, you get something awesome like that. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. He's my old beautiful boy right there, handsome, my oldest, you know, right there underneath the pier. Hey, guess what? Sometimes it just works. You know what I mean? This is us before a wedding the day before. Sometimes, and we're, we're doing some cool stuff there. Sometimes the Polaroid just works, right? And other times it doesn't. You never really know what you're gonna get. But isn't that the fun of it? Man, I hope you've had as much of a good time as I've had talking about this with you as you've had listening to it with me. Please don't forget to leave your comments down below. If you like anything that you see, pick it up using one of the Amazon links, guys. I will catch you all on the flip side. Leave me your favorite Instax Polaroid stories. Share them with me. I'd love to hear them. Bye for now.